Hey, family and friends, I am here with Oleg. I'm not even gonna do an intro, so a lot of you guys know who Oleg is. Uh, works at Bellevue Windermere Commons, phenomenal realtor, experience 22 plus years. Uh, so we're gonna sit down and learn a lot about Oleg. Oleg, I brought you in here today really to, uh, we, we all wanna hear your perspective, right? When it comes to the market, when it comes to real estate, when it comes to your story, a lot of agents aren't as seasoned as you are. Right, so we do want to learn a little bit more about you, your story, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna throw spitball questions at you. Uh, well, I I have a lot of stories to tell, but I'll that's probably, good. I have that's probably good. Stories is good. We'll start with something really basic. Uh, when I started my career, it was about 22 years ago. Okay. And uh, back in 2000, we have mortgage rates about eight percent. Okay. And when we have mortgage rate eight percent, ever since came to the basic, we have to find the clients. We can help educate clients, make sure they avoid any mistakes, and uh, we will try to help them to find properties. Was it hard in two thousand? Yeah, it's I well, think it was, was a, it mortgage was a, rate was eight percent. Yeah, it was great. It actually, in two thousand uh, two thousand one, uh, rates uh, dropped. I remember seven point one percent. Yeah, and everybody was so excited. Like yeah. rates is much better right now. Now more people can buy a house. So do you know why rates went down in two thousand one? Uh, because was dot com recession, dot com, dot com recession, yeah, and so dot com bubble. I lived through this like first recession with yeah. my career. It was very yeah. interesting because uh, that time we have employment rate went up so much, and also what we have a lot of people losing job. Not just IT people. Like yeah. I remember, like Boeing's lay off a lot of people at the same time, and stocks uh, stock market dropped uh, as well. But real estate market actually was pretty steady at that time. So yeah. real, real estate prices went up about 4%. And uh, yeah, I started to start my career. It was like total disaster when I started, definitely, yeah. because uh, pretty much you doesn't really know many people. And all this real estate business, it's, it's all about numbers, how many people you know, how many people can, you can help, and how many people in your database. What I like what you said was you said helping families. What I know a lot a lot of people will come out and they'll say, hey, what can I do to close the next deal or this, this, and that? It's like, you can't look at it like that, right? Because when you're helping a family with their largest purchase of their life, right? Yeah, yes. And you're borrowing hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars from an investor and you're committing to a 30-year payment. I mean, those loan docs that you have to sign at escrow are a lot longer even than marital contracts. That's right. That's <laughs> right. So, it's right so, now, yeah. But before yeah. it wasn't like that. Before it was like fast and easy loans. Before it was fast and easy. It was like yeah. much more yeah. easy. You just have to have your credit score yeah. and bank will trust you with money. You can say, well, I'll have enough income. Yeah. And they're like, okay, we well, can give you millions of dollars and you can buy whatever you want. And yeah. As many houses as you want. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what led into the 2008 you know, quarter of recession. Nine recession. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That recession, though, was an anomaly. Right when people talk about recessions, yeah, that was one of the largest recessions that we had in over the course of I don't know, three decades. But that recession with real estate was specifically because of real estate. Yeah. Right. You had uh, you had AAA, AA, horrible uh, loans. You had uh, crashing bonds. Right. So in general, that was very very bad. That was because of real estate specific. That's why we saw real yeah. estate go down. And your family have basic needs. Yeah. And uh, every person, they worry about and care about family, occupation, recreations, and dreams. Yeah. And specifically, if you have a uh, new kids and you want for kids to have like play yard, a room to play. Yeah. And uh, this is like housing becomes really, really important. Terrence, if you remember like what's happened before COVID and yeah. the economy was great, everybody making good money. A housing market was growing, but it was, was pretty steady. So people yeah. have enough income to support these mortgage payments. But what's what's happening uh, like in last couple of years of the COVID, the prices went up 45%. Yeah. And the jobs did not went up 45% with the housing prices. Of course not. So yeah. that's changed affordability for majority of people who live in those neighborhoods, who yeah. live in our location, for example, in Seattle area. And those people not able to afford to buy homes anymore. Yeah. But they not afford to buy not just houses anymore, they not afford to uh, to get to the rental market as well because yeah. rental market increased as well. Uh, just recently I listened for uh, like very good podcast, uh, it was Bigger Pocket podcast on, uh, on the market. And I listened to chief economist from Moody's Analytics and he's have very interesting prediction for 2023 and what's okay. happening with the market. And uh, what he's uh, thinking, uh, those uh, millennials, millennials right now, it's the biggest 
buyers force millennials gonna buy the most homes right now because millennials start getting kids uh, st- start like getting families raising kids baby boomers are like pretty much parents of those millennials uh, they already have like three four five houses they have rental properties and they're probably going to be downsized in near future maybe next 10 years and so th- they're going to sell those properties those properties going to be become on the market available so but millennials need housing and a lot of them a lot of those young people they not afford to buy properties they not afford to uh, rent properties and a lot of them living with the parents people call them cia buyers you know what the cia buyers means so those buyers who have credit who uh, like cs have credit have income and have assets cia mm-hmm. but they live in, in a hopium <coughs> opium it's uh, like hope to prices drop down yeah they uh, hope to raise going down and they like really really want to move to the housing market but they're not ready yet they're not not ready but buyers always have to be you know uh, able willing and ready to buy the property to become a buyer and a lot of buyers they can buy right now but they're not uh, willing to do so because they hope to live in this hopium they hope to get better better rates maybe better pricing i know education is a big factor too yeah. right so like there's a lot of noise online there's a lot of a lot of uh like drone pal announced that oh right now is not the best time to buy a home for first time home buyers you have a lot of people online saying hold or i'm selling everything that i own or all there's a lot of noise mm-hmm. too online uh you know news what you see in the, depending on which side whether you're looking at cnn or fox wherever which side you are on politically You'll sit, you'll sit there and people will digest and take in all this, I want to say, negative noise that are in the market. So that also, I think, plays a huge, huge role. Education. Education is a huge factor. You know, back to what you said, even when 2020 and 2021 homes were going up in value by 45% plus, depending on the market in the region, people were still buying homes because rates were lower, right? Yeah. Now, of course, as rates came up. But now, what I like to tell all clients today is why I believe right now is a phenomenal time to be looking in the market is yes, your rates are a little bit higher, but especially in the season that we're in right now, a lot of sellers, they're not selling because they want to, they're selling because they need to, they're a little bit more desperate, right? Selling in December or selling in January is not the best time to list a home. That's one factor, but more importantly, it's a buyer's market. Buyers have the ability to negotiate, uh, depending on, you know, the area in the market that you're in majority of deals that I'm closing right now, look, I'm telling you right now, I'm seeing seller credits or I'm seeing pricing reductions, yeah. even on the east side. <clears throat> yeah. Like, uh, like even on the east side, that's Bellevue, Kirkland, Issaquah. We're seeing that, right? There are pockets that, yeah, there's multiple offers on homes, but at the same time, there is opportunity right now to find a really good deal. And with these credits that we're receiving, you don't, even if rates are, for example, like at six and a quarter or six and a half, you, as well as I know, you're, you're not going to get a six and a half percent rate, even if you get if you get a seller credit, because there are programs like we have that two one buy down program three two one. Uh, also, last month, I got a guy in on a three and a quarter interest rate for his first 12 months. Oh. 12 months later, he's going to go up to four and a quarter before he even touches five percent. We're going to refinance him because we know that the market's going to shift. Now, what happened in 2021, Oleg, when rates were at under under four percent? For a majority of the clients and buyers and families who buy in properties, most families don't think about prices. Most uh, families thinking about what they can afford to pay. Like if you go to store, monthly, monthly yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go to store and like if you like uh, shopping for a car, for example, and if you see the car like you can afford to buy, it doesn't matter like uh, what price because like if your income is supporting to buy this car, you will buy anyway. So same same thing with the houses. This year it's very unusual uh, market and very unusual time. We even have less than 60% inventory, less than 60% pending and sold properties in end of this year. So this is like a little bit different market. So, and so do you think it's like a supply and demand issue still to this day? Yeah, right now? still to the day right now. We still so we do have less buyers, right? As of right now, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac also did their analyst and announcements and they said we have up to 60% year over year more applications being put in so yes we have low supply but we also have a lot less people taking applications to go and get home yeah. loans uh, 
a lot of buyers are very sensitive to the mortgage rate and payments because of affordability. So for 2023, what do you believe is going to happen? I want to say for Q1, mm -hmm. first quarter, and then as we transition into second quarter, it always picks up, right? Why? Because you have families transitioning, knowing, hey, school's coming up. So, so, so it's, it's, uh, that's, 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 that's a very, very interesting topic because uh, nobody have crystal ball, of course. But with my experience, what I can say, I, I think we're not going to see 7% uh, rates in next decade any longer. So rates uh, right now like 6.5, 6.25 actually dropped again today. But we're going to see lower rate and probably in the first uh, quarter, we'll see probably about 6% or maybe 5.75. By, by mid-summer, we're going to see about 5.5% mortgage interest rate. And uh, what's going to be happen, we're not going to see probably in our lifetime any more 2.75% rates any longer. But same thing as in the next decades, we're not going to see 7% any longer. So we already passed the worst time we can live through with this is huge jump. I, I call this jump like for mortgage interest rate from 3% to 6%, like 9-11 uh, effect. 9-11 effect, uh, if you um, heard about it, so I lived through this time as well. When 9-11 happens, nobody was buying houses and nobody was selling houses. Like market just freezed, freezed for six months. But after six months, uh, people realize, okay, life is going on, we have to move on with life, and we have to continue to live, buy property, sell property, find different jobs, move to different states. Uh, have new kids and have a bigger house. So like life's continued. But before uh, that, like it's what's, what's happening right now, we have the same effect. So when rate jump from 3% to 6%, the market is freezed. When we go to the springtime, the market will be softened and softened with lower, better interest rate, more affordability, and more buyers going to be come back to the market uh, to buy properties, look for the home, and they're going to look not on the price, the buyer is going to be look uh, on uh, what they can afford to pay for, and uh, that's going to be reflect on the buying decisions, what property and what location, what schools they're going to send the kids to. So this is going to be the main point. We'll see what's going to happen when it comes to the actual uh, value of the U.S. dollar. If something happens like nationally across, you know, from on a global scale, then we're really going to see, hey, you know, are they going to start up that money printer again and drop rates even lower, right? Or not in order to what strengthen the currency, strengthen the bond market, strengthen the U.S. Um, in general on a macro scale, right? Yeah, good stuff. Uh, 2023 will be a very interesting yeah. year, and we'll see what's going to be happening. But uh, supply and demand will be always work, and uh, will be uh, important when I have started to... Uh, talking about January, so we'll see how many listings will came on the market. And that's going to be dictate print housing market a lot. So if we're going to have a lot of listings here, let's say 10,000 of people decide to put it houses on the market at the same time. Yeah. And if that's going to be ha happens in January, and if January <clears throat> we're going to have flooded market with the listings, then price is definitely going to be decreased. But if those people will be uh, kind of stand off, if sellers are going to be stand off like they stand off right now, and with uh, improving mortgage interest rate and inflation, like you just say, uh, so if that's going to be happen, so we're going to see another wave uh, for demand. Yeah. And wave, de wave for demand going to be helped to, again, move more from the balance market more to the seller's market. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. So... Well, before I let you go, I never ask, and I usually ask this up front, but I'm going to ask you now, what market do you work in? Yeah, I'm in Bellevue, I'm in Bellevue Commons, I'm on the east side. majority yeah. of my clients live in King County and Snohomish County, and I'm driving pretty much everywhere from Olympia to Bellingham. So I have been clients yeah. bought properties in Bellingham last year. So I sell houses on the islands, and uh, yes, pretty much everywhere. Okay, okay, very, yeah. very good. Um, Friends, thank you so much. I know Oleg's been here for, for uh, almost a full half hour, which is fantastic. Thank you so much for listening. If you guys are looking for a phenomenal real estate agent that's seasoned, been in the business for 22 years plus, uh, still incredibly active, and that's really a top producer in King County, reach out to Oleg. 
Oleg is going to be an amazing resource. Yeah, Oleg is going to be a phenomenal resource when it comes to, even if you're like thinking, hey, I don't know if I want to buy right now, if I want to sell, running comps on my current property, anything to do with real estate on the east side um, uh, or in King County, reach out to Oleg and he will definitely help you out. Oleg, thank you for coming. Thank you so I much, appreciate Chef. it. Thank you for having me. Thank you.